where we are going to continue with the presentations. We have three presentations now for the afternoon, and afterwards we are going to the discussion session. So we will begin with Glaucia. Glaucia, thank you for coming. Glaucia is graduated in chemistry here at the University of Sao Paulo in Ribeirão Preto Campus. She has a master's degree in chemistry by uh, PUC, Rio, and she's a PhD student in sciences in sciences in Sena, USP in Piracicaba. Her research interests are microplastics and an emerging organic pollutants. Thank you, Glaucia. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure for me being here today. Thank you for inviting. And I am a PhD student in science, but uh, today I am here because I am also a volunteer research at HUT Brazil. So my presentation is about uh, HUT. Uh, my involvement with HUT started in 2015 when I met uh, one of its directors, uh, Marcio Gerba, and at an uh, event called Mar Sem Lixo, Mar da Gente, which took place in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, uh, when I met uh, also João Malavolta, Simone, Monica Costa. <laughs> in that moment, I introduced myself uh, as a master degree student and talking about uh, my research, my project of research, and that was a study about microplastic in surface water in Guanabara Bay. And Marcio loved my research. And in the day after, uh, he was at uh, the lab of the university and recording my routine for his documentary called Uma Gota no Oceano. Since then, uh, we have uh, been sharing experience and information about plastic pollution. And today, my role at HUT is to, to support it to production of content to disseminate uh, information uh, in order to contribute uh, with environmental education to population in an informal way. Hut Brazil is a no governmental organization founded in 2011 in Florianópolis, Santa Catarina State, by two friends and surfers, Marcio Gerba and Simão. Uh, about the problem, uh, conscience about the importance of the problem and the alarming amount uh, plastic pollution in the oceans and uncomfortable uh, with the situation, uh, plastic pollution in the ocean where th this place uh, they use to surface, uh, they have decided to found the organization, no govern governmental organization, uh, to help uh, elaborate a solution for this problem. Our mission is to be a route of solution for the impact of human consumption and disposal in natural environment. Our team is formed uh, by executive director, fiscal counsel, legal consultants, and a technical consultants. And we have also volunteers and supporting and people media influencers uh, such as actors, singer, model and the environmental activist, activist from Menos Um Lixo, Fê Cortes and surfers, actresses and here uh, our partners, expensers uh, EcoSurf is one of these. Uh, any companies supporting our activities? 
So, uh, about our activities, we realize in the cleanup of the beach and the environmental proper dispose for the solid collective waste, the encouragement for councils' consumptions, reusing and recycling of materials, art, sport, production of content for an informal dissemination to promote environmental education and popularization of science, delivery of lectures, development of products to stimulate environmental hours, political engagement in defense of the pollution, protection and environment preservation. Uh, we have uh, already held more than 2,000 clean action, bringing more than 2,000 people together, causing impact in more than 5 million people in media and TV. We have uh, already developed online campaigns supporting governmental projects against marine pollution. Uh, we have uh, also Re recognizing of the media and uh, Globe News, G1, and social media. We have more than 23,000 followers on Instagram, more than 7,000 uh, likes on Facebook. We uh, are using for information population and promote to reflection about the consumptions and action and stimulating changing of actions in your lifestyle. Uh, for this we use the comic uh, information, post and real images. And production uh, content about scientific information. This, for example, is about my research. Uh, is a result of my PhD. I presentation in this year in scientific event called CETAC in Belgium. And I pretend to submit this paper next week if my advisor finishes your correction. <laughs> <laughs> And we also hold the activities for kiddies in order to construct a new generation, more conscious and respectful with the environment, with more than 5,000 kiddies attended in 2018. Sorry, 500. And Art Root, we use the art as a tool for environmental education using the plastic, uh, the trash collected for creative artists. And we produce new products with a part of collective wa waste in our clean actions. Uh, here in this picture, for example, is a kill. Do you know kill surfers here? Zero waste, we motivating uh, the zero waste left lifestyle in, on Instagram, uh, posting information, how can be uh, this, um, put this practice in your routine. Reproduce recycle, recycling materials in order to spread environmental hours. Uh, nowadays, in Brazil, we strongly act in the cities of Rio de Janeiro and Florianópolis, but we also had some actions in Fernando de Noronha, São Paulo, and Porto Alegre, and we also counting of some representatives abroad, like in the United States, Chile, Spain, Portugal, Italy, France, Indonesia, and Kenya. Here, uh, one day, uh, clean, uh, clean up of beach in Indonesia, Chile, Ch Chile, sorry. <laughs> we have produced the doc documentary Uma Gota no Oceano uh, with uh, different scientists together. And the documentary has been shown in Brazil and other countries. 
and more than 10,000 people uh, saw, the, uh, uh, saw this documentary. Now I would like to show it. O plástico trouxe uma contribuição muito grande para a melhoria da saúde humana. Gera um monte de emprego, permite uma ampla variedade de utilização. O ser humano é uma criatura que se pressupõe saber alguma coisa sempre. Se pressupõe um sabedor. Isso é terrível. Isso é um reflexo do capitalismo que desconecta as pessoas da natureza, daquilo que nos dá a vida. It's not an easy problem, you know. We have to concern politics, uh, uh, companies, and every people that is uh, living around you. a 40% dos animais que a gente recebe acabam morrendo em função do lixo por conta de obstrução. There's no future for a world full of plastic pollution for the animals because it looks like food. It's a tragic mistake that our civilization has made. O lixo marinho, né, o lixo flutuante, ele é, na verdade, a consequência das, da, da, das deficiências né, de gestão de lixo em terra. O cara tá vendo as tempestades chegando na beira da praia. A maré tá enchendo como nunca encheu. Ele tá vendo os, os animais se encalhando e ele não consegue despertar para isso. É uma questão planetária. Mas é uma questão também profundamente individual do ser humano. Se dá conta dessa terrível situação e a partir dessa percepção profunda da totalidade, da impossibilidade, começar uma nova caminhada. Okay, now I would like inviting about uh, our next action, um, June 18, in Rio de Janeiro. Okay, thank you for pay attention. Now, 
Hopefully that would have made you all very motivated, especially with all that music and stuff. Um, any questions? I have a question. So you said that you've got uh, an impressive array of uh, team members, uh, very diverse, and you said you also have volunteers. What do the volunteers do? So do they help run the educational kind of side of things? What, what do you ask them to do? Uh, sorry. Uh, OK. Uh, uh, helping clean up. Uh, but uh, we have uh, other volunteers. For example, I am a volunteer, and I help uh, to create a production to with scientific information. Uh, have uh, other types of uh, volunteers. Volunteers uh, for creating the websites, uh, volunteers for financials, uh, a lot of things. I see. Nice. Okay. And how many volunteers do you have? Uh, uh, today, uh, 50 in official. Mm -hmm. But uh, clean up in the beaches, uh, it's a lot of, but it's not um, permanent. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> I see. Thank you. Any other questions? Glaucia, I, I remember uh, years ago when I first met Gabe, he was about to make a, a round Latin America trip and he was looking for, for support, financial support for this very long journey. Did it a happen in the end? Did, did he actually manage to collect his, all, all, all the resources he wanted to make this very long trip because it was one of the goals of his life project. Do you know if it did actually happen? Okay. Uh, can I answer in Portuguese? Okay. Uh, sobre a pesquisa do Márcio. O sonho dele era fazer uma viagem gigantesca por todas as costas do mundo inteiro, de toda a galáxia. E uh, eu, eu fico imaginando que ele chegou nesse ponto com a ONG, porque ele conseguiu fazer isso e se, se empoderou de toda essa informação. Você sabe alguma notícia dessa viagem? Tem alguma, algum material? Sim, ela está no documentário. Tem registros dessa, dessa viagem né, que ele fez para o Chile, é, ele foi para outros países também, mas ele ficou um tempo maior no Chile. E tem é, registros dessa viagem, que ele também fez limpezas de praia em, em áreas remotas e coletou pellets, plásticos. E, e tem alguns relatos disso no documentário. E ele também pretende lançar um, um outro recentemente. Any other questions? No, do you have a question? Thank you. That was lovely. Uh, so, um, I just wanted to, to say that you said you had international um, uh, collaborations. Um, if you were interested in the UK, um, there's a nice group called Surfers Against Sewage which um, might be very, because they are also surfers, they might be very interested in the work that, yeah, that you're doing. Right, any other last questions? Otherwise, we'll move on to the next. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Invite me. <laughs> hey, nice. It's not as warm. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank you, Glaucia. Good afternoon. <coughs> My name is William. I'm director, pre president of the Institute Ecofaxina. Uh, first, uh, I want to thank the organization uh, of the event for the opportunity to be here today. It's an honor for me. Uh, the Institute are founded in 2000, 2008 
uh, in the city of Santos, on the coast of Sao Paulo. Uh, it's a non-profit uh, organization focused on, on defense of soci social, collective, and diffusive rights. Ecofashion like Institute informs, educates, and inspires people to speak uh, in the name of the oceans. We work on the development of actions to clean and monitor ecosystems. We focus on the recovery of degraded areas of man man uh, mangrove, uh, and contained uh, plastic uh, discarded by favelas, uh, slums, uh, in the estuary of Santos and São Vicente. It's a, a public utility uh, entity in Santos, municipal uh, public utility. Our commitment to society, fight for the recovery and preservation of the most imp important ecosystem in our region, the mangrove, reduce the daily output of plastic to the ocean and, the, and its impacts on marine wildlife, inform, educate, and inspire people to speak and act on behalf of the oceans. Uh, we propose necessary measures, uh, raise awareness, recover, monitor, and protect the environment. We also uh, promote uh, environmental education, sensitize, raise awareness, and engage people to, through eco-education education activities as a voluntary actions. Uh, more than 50, uh, uh, 53 tons of waste from coastal ecosystem. Uh, a lot of this uh, in, in the mangroves, né? Uh, packaging, cosmetics, pet bottles, uh, caps, drugs, syringes, diapers toys, bags, larger waste, such as televisions, refrigerators. Um, uh, over the last 10 years, with more than same, uh, same volunteer actions carried out, carry out, we have already seen everything we would not like to see in the estuary waters of Santos and São Vicente. Some images of the voluntary actions. the beaches of the region uh, and the, in the mangroves. Uh, ten years of actions for the environment, participation of more than 2,000 uh, volunteers, more than 53 tons of waste collected, the 65 cleanups in mangroves, 31 cleanups in beaches and rock shores, and four cleanups in rivers and lakes. Uh, almost plastic, you know, uh, we, we collect. It's an uh, intense exchange of information, experiences that promote the real perspective of the problem in, in the population. We also developed uh, research uh, linked to the uh, pollution, uh, special uh, heavy metals, uh, uh, organic persistent pollutions, pollutants, uh, uh, almost in partnership with the uh, universities of the region. Collecting uh, uh, sediment, sed sed sediment from the estuary of Santos. Also, the, the place where uh, a lot of people live in, in the ecosystem uh, and discard everything. Máquina de lavar, washing machine, uh, uh, garbage, sewage. A lot of, 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 of uh, research with the sediments and water. 
we have a lack of data uh, the last uh, the last uh, bulletin from CETESB is a regulatory uh, ambiental agency for, for, from the government. They published uh, the last uh, in 2000, 2001. And we are focused in this ty type of research upon uh, the pollution events the institute institute uh, is often invited to participate to spread the problem in the estuary of Santos. here um, with the uh, jack johnson a singer in his tour people from estonia came to Santos to to talk with us uh, they organized the cleanup day worldwide. In the press, uh, reports on regional uh, journals. We, we don't receive uh, public uh, money. We, we uh, developed our work with donations. Companies, with, uh, we don't have a, a patrocinador, sponsors, but, but, we, but we now have the projects that uh, the private sector can uh, participate. Lectures for employees, volunteer, and individuals also can help volunteer in donations, donations of skills, engagement in social media. Sorry, Where, who believes in the Ecofaxina Institute? Some NGOs that work have have been working with us in voluntary actions. Uh, media that consult in, in interviews and partners. Partners uh, also uh, most of the partners academic from the, the, the region of La uh, Baixada Santista. And people uh, is, is too focused. So, uh, people today are very focused on the litter that is on the beach and don't realize that the most of the marine litter comes from rivers and estuaries, especially in under, underdeveloped countries. Uh, this is a, a publication in Scientific American, steaming the, the plastic tide. Ten rivers contribute most of the plastic in the oceans. In Asia, Africa, South America, Central and North America, Europe, uh, a lot of uh, Southeast Asia, Africa, South America contributes a lot, but uh, I have a lack of data. This is the River Citaro in Indonesia, Manila Bay, Philippines, Rio dos Bugres, Santos. Is very similar. Uh, here is the news of the uh, shipment that the Argonauta say about the, the, the loss of the, a container ship that falls in the water. And these products are, uh, are, are reaching beaches out of the uh, Santos. Here's uh, a photo from Maresias, the and favelas of city houses. Today is the major source of marine pollution by plastic on the coast of the state of São Paulo. Destruction of the forest with the greater capacity of capture and retention of carbon on the planet, loss of habitat and biodiversity, 
economic losses in the areas of health, tourism, fisheries, ecosystem services. Here are uh, uh, one mangrove that we are monitoring and uh, also divulgamos uh, imprensa, spread to the press, the news. They cut the mangrove and occupy the area and throw the trash in, in the estuarine system. So, uh, every day, a lot of plastic came out uh, of the estuary and reached the sea in tons by day. This is a, a satellite images. It's uh, the uh, Rio dos Bugres, finds limit between Santos and São Vicente, divides the two cities, Santos and São Vicente. Where uh, after uh, is, is the mangrove, and then they occupy with trash and living above the trash. Here are some, some photos showing the pollution in the estuarine system. This mangrove, you can see the floor. And the beaches, that trash came from, from the mangrove, the tide uh, brought the, the garbage to the bay, and the waves uh, throw the, the, the trash to the beach. And uh, rocky coast. Uh, domestic waste. And the, the waste is removed from the beach with tractors and, and trucks. Every day, 20 tons is removed from the beaches of Santos. Part, part of the, that waste uh, go to the uh, coastal currents, uh, the spalha, uh, the spread the, the, the trash to the coast of São Paulo. Um, in, in 2009, we de developed a, a, a project called Environmental Waste Collection System. Uh, it's the first phase, the work is of cleaning and recover degraded mangroves. We've, we've, we'll cover an area approximately, approximately uh, seven, six, four thousand meters, square meters. The project uh, agreement of, on academic cooperation with the Oceanographic Institute of USP. Tuha is our collaborator. Uh, operational base construction sh uh, shed now uh, in the uh, opera, opera, opera base, operational base in partnership with the private sector. Formation of our, our work front with the steel dwellers. Uh, the, the uh, habitants, uh, installation of uh, containment, con containment barriers in the estuary, eco barreiras, and recover of the mangrove. Eco barriers uh, contain floating waste discarded by steel favelas, uh, reduce the dispersion of plastic in the mangrove, Reduce the plastic in the bay, bays and beaches of Santos and São Vicente. Here's a, a hydrodynamic mo modeling of the estuary of Santos, showing the cu superficial currents, the velocity that uh, transport the trash to the bay and open ocean. Here's a detail. Uh, uh, next to 
the favelas and an illustration of the storing system and currents uh, carrying the trash sewage to the Bay of Suns. And the echo barriers uh, have the object, uh, propose the objective of works pass passively with the tidal variation, estimated cost of linear matter uh, uh, to 140, uh, estimated cost of echo barriers, phase one. Uh, uh, one uh, mil reais. Here is some uh, image from the, the eco, bar eco barriers disposal. Now, uh, today the trash is coming uh, to the sea with no no mitigation. The boats using to collect the trash, uh, three aluminum boats, and a uh, heft, uh, balsa, a balsa para transportar, and, and platforms, uh, platforms uh, in the end of the favela, to people discard the garbage. They don't discard in the. Uh, street because uh, the people who live uh, next to the street tell the people que está atrás, he's behind, to throw in the tide. The tide is the garbage man that carry out the garbage. Operational base, uh, total constructed area. Uh, 1.350 metros quadrados, uma área também, an area for uh, uh, transshipment and waste of waste and maneuver of the boats, location of the shed, the area chosen for the construction of the shed is located near the estuary, from where families will be transferred to a housing complex in Santos. And after uh, this agreement with the uh, public, Ministerio Público, right, to recover the area of mangrove. Uh, here is the map uh, by Coab Santista, uh, is a company that constructs uh, uh, popular houses, né? and the shed of sorting, uh, construction in partnership with the private sector, containment of flo floating solid waste, monthly withdrawal uh, of 80 tons of solid waste from the estuary, drastic reduction of the amount of the garbage on the beaches, incoming generation following coming families living in the institute house. This is the uh, machinery processing the garbage, the, the, the plastic, to benefit and aggregate value to, to the families uh, sold the, the, the plastic and recover the graded mangrove areas as a, stra a strategy for reduce uh, marine pollution and freezing of the favelas, uh, cleaning and reforestation of degraded mangrove areas, integrating public and housing policies and functioning, fu functioning as a tool to freeze favelas growth. Community involvement, partnerships with the state government, Coab, CDHU, and municipalities. Here is, is uh, how the favelas occup occupied the mangrove, and after the restoration, we have a uh, ecological cor corredor, cor corredor ecológico de mangue. 
some 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 young young uh, collect plastic on the tide, but the tide is uh, the the plastic is, is dirty and the, the price is low. They don't have now the uh, beneficiamento of the do resíduo. O intuito é a gente beneficiar o resíduo para agregar valor e os jovens poderem comercializar isso e, e poderem ter um, um retorno financeiro maior. Partners, uh, today we are, we are talking with Coca-Cola, uh, with the support of the Instituto Oceanográfico, Unisanta, Unifesp, Terracom, govern, uh, Federal Government, uh, uh, National plan uh, uh, to reduce marine pollution, uh, state government, and uh, uh, Prefeitura de Santos, municipality of Santos. Let us together transform our environmental reality, marine life tanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tuha. Thank you, the, all the, the staff to invite us to, to be here today. Brilliant, thank you. Any questions? Can I answer in Portuguese? É, na realidade, bom, primeiro de tudo, parabéns, né? Acho que é, essa dinâmica de ir atrás da solução é o que a gente tem que fazer, né? E a uma das minhas perguntas para você é em relação à questão das ecobarreiras. Como que, como que funcionou? Se você puder explicar um pouquinho melhor, vocês conseguiram instalar sem... Não, só foi vontade. Só é um projeto. Ah, tá. É porque eu imaginei que vocês tinham instalado Não. e... Ah, beleza, então. É porque a ideia é que talvez essa seja uma estratégia interessante, mas eu queria entender um pouco como são as dificuldades de, de conseguir... Instalar isso, tudo mais. A lot. <laughs> então, tá yeah, bom, he asked about the eco barriers, if they were actually implemented, but it's a, actually a, a project. It's not. It has not been implemented yet. So. So we need to ask that question in what five years time? <laughs> Any other questions? Just, just to comment briefly, uh, perhaps. Um, Barbara, who did her thesis, her doc, uh, PhD thesis on barriers, could aggregate, could contribute in the discussions later, uh, because she she st studied an uh, experience in Rio de Janeiro uh, using the the barriers and saw several problems over there. So you can perhaps share later. In there. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> Any? Do you want some now? Well, I I try. I have a, a little uh, problems with English too, but <laughs> um, uh, the Echo Barrier project uh, began at uh, 2004 with a project from a woman from uh, uh, FGV uh, Institute, uh, and then she uh, after then uh, she was the uh, secretary of ambiente from the. Rio de Janeiro State, and then in, they, they implant these eco barriers in uh, Rio. Uh, first, with a uh, uh, project pilot, I don't know how to say English project pilot. A pilot project. <laughs> with a pilot project in a river, the name is uh, uh, São João Beriti River, and uh, was with uh, uh, Wood make with uh, wood and um, uh, plastic drums uh, and was uh, very expensive because uh, every every times that rain they 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 were they must be fixed and then it was really very expensive. And then, after then they experiment with uh, eco barriers with only like this picture. So it's 
more simple, yes, like this. Then it's not so expensive. And the, the, the workers that work uh, at the Zeco Barriers, uh, what uh, were not salary, uh, they, uh, uh, what they paid with, uh, at the time, uh, 700 reais in the month, but then I don't know. And I don't know, know now how is it. And um, uh, at the Olympic Games, they construct more like five from, from these eco barriers. And, but after these Olympic Games, we can, um, we have mo no more information on the internet. Uh, it's, um, in the Olympic Games, they, they was a uh, 12 action uh, again uh, pollution and now there's no action <laughs> and now you cannot find action again pollution in Rio de Janeiro they 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 put out from the internet you cannot find we don't know uh, because there was a, a, a lot of investment uh, before the Olympic Games but now Where's the money? I don't know. Yeah. And the, the barriers in Rio are drowning. Barriers that is abandoned. Any following questions or comments? Well, thank you for an interesting presentation. Uh, I just want to tell you that CETESB has a coastal water program of monitoring, and we have uh, several sampling sites in the Santos estuary. And the beach. But no, the beach the is only for microbiological parameters. Yeah. This, this one is with, we assess quality of water and sediments. Yes. So you can have the data if you want. Yes. Uh, it's available on our site. We have uh, the last is from uh, what year? It's not beach monitoring. Yes, it's yes. the other one. Okay. But the last, the last bullet in the uh, what year? Keanu, we are finishing, Keanu, 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 uh, we are finishing the 2008 report now. Okay, so the last one is 2017. Thank you, so much happening. Any other questions, comments? If not, thank you very much. And thank we'll move on to our last speaker. <laughs> I would, look, I would like to uh, invite Simone uh, Oigman to make her presentation. She is the, she is the founder and executive director of the Brazilian Institutes of Biodiversity, PhD in ecology from UERJ, the State University of Rio de Janeiro. With a, with a sandwich doctorate at Tel Aviv University in 2006 and postdoctoral degree in the ecology department of UERJ between 2009 and 2012. She has experience in the coordination of social environmental projects, developing studies on environmental impacts, marine bioinvasion, population ecology, and benthic marine communities in rock shores and consolidated vegetated areas and coral reefs. For 12 years, she, uh, she has been applying his, her knowledge and experience in the third sector in non-formal education, in events, lectures, courses, training, research projects, consultancies, and social environmental projects. She's also on the scientific committee of the NGO, This Is My Earth. Thank you, Simone. Thank you, good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be here. Um, well, as she already told you, um, I am a marine biologist, a marine scientist that uh, has a different way, uh, transitory, like I was, and, and my, my story uh, is, of course, together with the Institute. Um, so, Start here. So the institute was, uh, I set up the institute 
until 2013, because I've been studying since 2000 um, the, uh, the curls in the north state of Rio. I had, um, during my academic life, I have this big question about, about the evaluating the health ecosystem and using corals and uh, marine biodiversity as indicators. And as a scientist, we, we first need data. And this was my first big challenge on 2000. And uh, it took me uh, many years doing, doing research for more than 11 years, doing my master, PhD, and then postdoc, and collecting a lot of information, and also uh, publishing, but it wasn't enough. So when I was in a conference uh, in Australia and in the International Coral Symposium in 2012, I decided I, have to, I had to concentrate my effort on the third sector because um, I was together with, I don't know, 2,000, 4,000 people there. It was a brilliant conference, but in the end, everybody was very frustrated very sad because although all the technology, all the information gathered, and uh, uh, we had a very big and uh, crisis in the nature. So I decided that I had to change my course, not a lot, but uh, concentrate my energy in uh, the third sector. So I set up the institute, which was the new challenge. And uh, so the main goal is to contribute to the protection and conservation of the environment by implementing a science-based project. We focus in sustainability. And our mission, which is a big mission, is uh, articulate and integrate the different sectors of society in search of uh, solutions to conserve biodiversity and have a better quality of life. So this is the big challenge because it's, uh, everybody has a lot of information, knowledge, experience, but it's not sharing or is exchanging. We are, now society is, is changing, but it's still slow, and we have to uh, speed up and speed up. So the Institute uh, um, it's now seven years old, and we have uh, we act through different ways. We develop social environmental projects. Just a minute, I am. Uh, um, we uh, offer training for different public, for teachers, I'm gonna tell you later. Uh, we develop events together with many partners. Um, we promote uh, different activities and we have to take all these uh, activities and go to communication through media, through uh, different kind of um, to the press and um, TV, newspapers. We have to communicate it better. That's, I think, one of the most important part because we have a lot of uh, richness, but we have to uh, communicate them. And, and, and we also do some consultancy, but they should always be public. This is the main point, because otherwise it, wa it won't be used from, uh, for the society. And uh, we have also internship, international internship, and um, national ones. And all of this we, we can do because we have public, we have partnership with the public sector, the private sector, and the NGOs. And our structure uh, is very, I don't know how familiar you are with this, but we have a board of directors which is, are all volunteers. We have a board of counselors, and they, are, they come from different uh, formations. We have artists, we have scientists, we have uh, environmentalist people, we have um, entrepreneurs, I don't know how to say it, it's like this. Uh, we have all kinds because it's a very big challenge and it's not easy. So we have to uh, define our strategy and we need this support. So, now we are, uh, I would say, almost 100 people working uh, directly and indirectly because we have uh, partnerships with the universities because this is where my life comes in and I have a lot of, we have a lot of collaborators from more than uh, 14 universities in Brazil. And uh, so it's a big, yeah. how do you say, Hoda? Real, will, will, yes. 
Thank you. So our ongoing projects, uh, maybe you, you are familiar with some, I don't know, the Echorize project, the Sun Coral project, the Heshinga Viva project, and a non-formal education program called uh, Environmental uh, Footprint, Pegada Ambiental. And uh, today I'm going to focus on the Echorize project, which is the one related with the, um, the marine leader, which is related to my life. So, so everything started in Buzuz in 2000 when I was a master's student. And I, I didn't, I, I had this big question and I needed information. So I, I, I went for, uh, to collect uh, biological data and also uh, environment, um, human pressure. Because Buzuz is a, a fast growing city, coastal city resort and it's, it attracts one million people per year. And on carnival and holidays, you have sometime 150,000 people, which is a lot of people. And um, so it's uh, the fifth most visited uh, place in Brazil. And uh, at the same time, they have this special feature, uh, environmental, uh, which is the uh, coral oasis and people are not aware about it. This was one of my first points is that uh, it wasn't me that found out that, but nobody knew that too. So we have to go and tell not only people, but especially the local people, because this is a treasure. And why it's a treasure? So uh, besides working, studying, I, I started uh, in the past uh, talking to people and integrating and um, trying to understand as a scientist, but uh, collecting information a lot and processing all of this, and then uh, explaining the importance, the ecological, the economic and social importance. And then uh, research, I conducted uh, the first research was in 2000 to evaluate the health ecosystem, the health uh, environment. And uh, so the leader was a component of this big protocol that I, first I was understanding, um, trying to uh, know better the, the uh, marine biodiversity, the, and also, so I, I, we, we had two expeditions, one to collect biological data, and uh, the other one to collect uh, environmental pressure uh, information activities based on the the ships, on the litter, on the beach, litter on, on the water, on subtidal um, environment, and also the fishing activities. So we were trying to uh, um, describe and at the same time measure the, these activities along I showed before, these 10, uh, 11 places. So then we could understand it better and interpret it. And then um, I, I went again uh, in 2016 and 17 because uh, during my life I did it by myself as a, a researcher. But then with the Institute, uh, my study became a project, not only mine. For, from Now we have, a ver uh, like in the Echorize project, we have almost 30 people working, not all permanent, but we have uh, educators, researchers, collaborators, um, communicators, and um, working with all these uh, areas. And research is a very big um, uh, part of it. And uh, this protocol is another challenge because as a scientist, when I found out my conclusion was, okay, the coral were, they, they were, uh, the corals were suffering from the pressure. Okay, but I wanted to go further. I wanted uh, to create an environmental protocol which uh, managers could use, not only scientists. That was my pursuit. And then we also in 2015 for uh, UN, we did um, the first, um, like a, um, we created the protocol with these ecological indicators and uh, this environmental pressure index. And now in the Echorize project, we are running next steps because they are made of many steps. It's like a monitoring. So you have to understand 
uh, the environment you have to apply and see how does it goes. So then you can validate the, it. So, but we need uh, information. So that's the, what the, the point of the marine leader. Uh, so I, I, I published the information on 2017. 2007 was published. You see how long we take when we have a project of many things and we are processing by ourselves. But anyway, we, we had this information uh, about the leader in the beach and on the, on the water. And we got uh, 16,000 liter were counted visible pieces because during the holiday we, we did some survey in the morning and in the afternoon with volunteers and um, during four days. And then and it was a holiday. And then uh, we got this uh, mean liter density of 13.76. And uh, the most, the dominant was cigarette butts. And uh, we, we could uh, see that many, uh, most part of the litter came from the visitors on the beach, the packages and everything, because paper was the, the next category most dominant. And then on marine litter, we had 400 items. And on hard bottoms that we counted, we were three people swimming systematically uh, through the rocky shores. And then we, we also had this uh, mean liter density of 2.9 item, items per 100 square meter. And plastic was the most abundant litter. And it came from fishery gear. So monofilament lines. And uh, so this was my first um, moment with marine litter. And in those times, we didn't have internet like so nice and I remember to go to the library and it was so hard to find information. And in Brazil we, we just had, I remember a master in Pernambuco, a master degree, a master te uh, dissertation. And um, it was uh, tough, but it was very interesting and at the same time was showing how society was using the environment and the problem we were uh, seeing. So. Uh, when we came uh, back again to the uh, to the beaches, we found now it's this is our pre preliminary results because we are dealing with the protocol and after we want we want to concentrate in the components. But uh, yeah, I especially to say this is uh, Fernanda Casari, a researcher from the uh, State University of Rio de Janeiro, which is conducting and. Um, uh, she noticed that uh, now uh, we have more plastic on the beach and they were straws um, and on the subtitle we have plastic bags was the dominant uh, garbage litter. And then um, this information is very important so we can uh, through this uh, from 2006 until now we have been doing also a lot of uh, environmental education activities so we had uh, some campaigns with different publics. So, for instance, we, we worked with tourists. Uh, we, uh, it's a tourist re uh, area. So we, we explained them about uh, the importance of taking care and, and what does exist underwater and why do they have to uh, protect. Also with the residents and the students, we, we went to different places with all the information, we have stands and uh, a small group of people in each uh, talking about the marine biodiversity, talking about the threats, talking about the solutions and all the initiatives that exist in Brazil because this is something that people don't know. So we have not only us, we have a lot of people doing many nice things. So we have to share all these um, uh, initiatives and show that they can connect and, and uh, so they, they started feeling like they, they are part of the problem and the solution. So, but they have to be connected. So we also worked with boatmans. Uh, we um, produced a lot of material and uh, we went to the 50 boats um, and uh, we talked to many people um, about the environment so they could uh, rethink their acti at attitudes, produce less, and reuse. And uh, we, we um, so we also did some partner, we, uh, 
menos um lixo, e outros, porque todos eles são importantes, então você pode, você sabe, integrar e ficar mais forte. E, além disso, as campanhas, We also um, gave some, gave some training course for uh, the public, uh, for public teachers. We had a very good uh, articulation with the local municipality. This is this was something very important for us, because I mean, you know, we we write projects, we want the money, and then we go. And sometimes you don't have everybody that you know it's there, and you you they are not there because there are many reasons. And then when you get, you, you get strength, when you have this, all these partnerships in uh, the environmental municipality, how do you say? Secretaria do Meio Ambiente. Uh, okay, the environmental and the education and the tourism uh, part of the municipality, they work together and they really engage on the activities. So we went beyond, in fact, the activities because it's their lives. So. We did this training course, and it was marvelous because the first time we did, uh, we went, uh, f we did an underwater trail with the, prof the teachers. So first was now the theoretical part, and then a practical one, and they could see because they live there on the coast, and they don't go, they don't dive, they don't swim, they don't snorkel, and so to conserve, they have to know it. So and to face it, and, and then it was a new world for them. And we also used the ocean literacy, which was new for us because it was an American initiative that af after Euro Europe started using this in the schools and we uh, uh, exchanged information and the principles about the ocean. So it was very, we, s we could see that they were um, assimilating like something important for them and the children. And after, after it, we get, we are still connected and sometimes they show us because they continue working in the class with the students doing many things about, about the corals and the, the fauna and flora, flora. So it's very interesting because they feel like they are part of the environment. And um, th there was this nice, very nice activity in the Sun Coral project that I, I we remember and I decided to put today in the morning, is that, uh, that um, we engage, as we were working in Buzios, and uh, Equarize project was the one that started there in 2016, and then in 2017 we got these uh, um, resources for the other project, which is also is a marine invasive species, is another big problem. And uh, so we decided, as we have been experiencing a lot of uh, exchanging and Uh, um, with the local people, we saw that they wanted to go further. And um, as I told you, the, the resources we got before was for research, but I, Bairbi couldn't do only research. We have to go f uh, uh, beyond. So we did, uh, we had some limit, limitation, of course, in the resources, but then we got this project and we said, look, Uh, marine invasive species is a problem, marine litter is a problem, so we have a problem with pollutions, biological pollutions. So may, and we, have, we need people from uh, local people thinking, uh, working and thinking about it in, uh, together or not with us. So we activated, we went for a school, we gave uh, a lot of lectures for almost I think 700 students and they got very uh, excited and then a part of it decided to continue the uh, youth collective and we engaged really two, 12 young people and um, so we were just there giving some support because the point is that they have to go uh, we are together but we, we are not going to make it for them we will help them so they they had many different activities by themselves they were the one choosing what because it should come from them. We, just, we are there giving information. So one of the information, one of, they were worried about the, the, the leader, marine leader. So it was the, the week of the, uh, when the UN uh, launched the, the big campaign of the clean seas. So we helped them to subscribe And uh, they mobilized all the people. We were 30 people there in Manguins Beach uh, during 
three hours, and we collected a lot of uh, litter on the beach. And they also found someone, a cooperative, who could collect it, measure uh, uh, weight, and then uh, give the right destination. So it was a very important um, moment for them. So they feel they could go uh, beyond that. So they also participate in other events of the other projects. So we are trying, you know, to give some voice to them so they could understand and, and continue uh, the, the, all the conservation um, activity. And then, so we, by, uh, for these activities, we have been producing a lot of public outreach material, which is very important. I, I also brought, I think I forgot there. I brought some of these materials from all the projects. So if you want to take a look, we have a very, it's another challenge. Because as a scientist, I want to put everything there. Because, you know, I want people to understand, to see. But this is not nice because it's a lot of information. So we have, that's why we have a very uh, multiple mixture, diverse group. So we have people from the communication. And we sit together, scientists, communicator people, and our educator. And we discuss because it's not easy to translate the information so people can absorb that. So we, it's, and it's very nice. And we, we <laughs> I think we have been doing a nice job because it's not only about the, also the information, it's also about the layout, all the, so you know, it's not easy to find someone that really understands your soul and what you want to put there. So we are doing that. And we did these posters, uh, consciousness posters for the boatmen's, for some um, places on the coast, restaurants where people can see that there is a, this marine protected area because they don't know that there is. Uh, part of it knows because of the past, because it, I'm not the first one to start working. We have also Coral Vivo, which already uh, worked there, used to have a visitor center. So, but the big challenge is how to maintain that, because we are just living, you know, in projects. So now this is my, my biggest challenge, is that, okay, we have an excellent um, a technical scientific part, but it, this is not enough. We have to communicate. Okay, this is also very important. But we need money for that. This is a sustainability, of course, that you need. You have to pay your cost, your fixed cost and everything. So we have to build capacity for, not for all of it and a, a network so you get stronger. So you need communication. And we have been doing that uh, from the last three years with more investment. Not all that I wanted, but I think the, the work is going very well because uh, we reached uh, more than 3 million people. With, uh, we have this consultancy, which is, you know, is very good and is doing some magic because I don't know how, but it's going very well, which is nice because I think it's uh, because we, we love what we do and we do it uh, in a nice way so people get connected. So we have been going with all of this and our next steps. I was thinking what to say to you because, of course, we have a lot of next steps. To, to follow and uh, continue our raise, raising our awareness through campaigns, publish our information. We really w have to start a citizen project, uh, right? And this is something that I, I will be very happy to go out from this meeting thinking about it because you have a lot of experience on that. And uh, I really, the, the, the region needs that. People need really this, that, and they are open for that. So, um, and of course, help decision makers to create suitable science-based policies and new regulations. We have this very uh, good relationship. It doesn't matter who is there, we are, already, we are there, we have our information. We want to help them. And, um, and it's cute because um, it's not, um, of course, money is important, but it's not all. And uh, they, they feel like we are there and uh, doing all this work for the last years and they want, and they are together now. And they are seeing how can they do it with the, um, the how do you say, empresarios, entrepreneurs, <laughs> what? Company owners of the companies, of the places, of the restaurants, of the hotels. So, because every, everybody should be together, you know, it's a matter, it's a, a responsibility and a good thing to do for us, for everybody. So, I think this is, 
what I wanted to show you and, and thank you for listening and be together. Brilliant, thank you. Because of time, have we got to, um, one question to ask? Anyone got a question? Yeah, there's a question at the back. And it's time for coffee. I need coffee. <laughs> Acho que eu vou falar em português, gente, porque eu falo muito rápido, eu jamais poderia fazer uma apresentação em inglês, porque dá tudo errado. É, vou, falar, vou falar devagar para você poder traduzir para quem não entende português. É uma preocupação minha, e, em primeiro lugar, mais uma vez, um prazer né, te ouvir, ver teu histórico, e quero mais é que você tenha sucesso, que a gente falando. Mas é, eu fico meio preocupada, e eu estou te dando esse toque, porque você falou que vai começar a trabalhar com ciência cidadã, porque... Tem a ciência cidadã e a gente tem diretrizes, as europeias são que a gente segue. Porque senão a gente vai estar criando fornecedor de dados sem comprometimento. E se tiver dentro de um projeto educacional, não é ciência cidadã. Então, é só um... É só, na verdade, não é um toque para você. Eu sei que você está muito baseada com educadores maravilhosos que eu conheço, mas é que eu fico meio preocupada com essa banalização. Já teve banalização da educação ambiental e agora estou vendo um pouquinho de banalização com a ciência cidadã. Isso me dá um pouquinho de medo, principalmente se trabalhar com unidade escolar. Porque a gente tem ainda as orientações pedagógicas que né, o ensino médio é para fomentar o desejo de ser pesquisador. Né, ou curioso, não precisa ser pesquisador dentro de academia, pesquisador da vida, pesquisador de buscar informação e fazer a reflexão, era só essa dica. E de mais sucesso. É, posso responder uma coisa rapidinho? É, I, I, may, pode ser em inglês? Uh, thank you. Uh, this is some uh, also concerns we have because we, you know, we have Camila Meirelles, which is our environmental educator, so that's why I'm not uh, showing citizen science. I'm just showing what we have done for all these years. And I know there are specialists here, and tomorrow will be the day where they are going to show that. So, th I mean, what I wanted to say is that it's a very important uh, thing to do. And I, I, I think the region needs to have this not only for leader but for corals. And we have, we have to think about good projects and, of course, uh, following the right criteria. So we have a very good work and, and result. So I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? If not, can we all say thank you again? Okay, so we are the three moderators will briefly present, né, the facilitators will present the, the work you did in the groups, okay? Perfect, right, so between the three of us, we covered um, three key aspects of uh, the initiatives we've talked about today and also tomorrow. We've talked about the removal of litter, engaging different populations with the issue, um, and then collecting some form of data and potentially citizen science. So I made this wonderful piece of art, which I don't think I can even read. Um, we said way too many things. I, I went too big too quickly. Um, but we talked about the removal of litter and what are the common themes across the different initiatives. The main conclusion is that they tend to focus on certain um, locations, so beaches. Uh, and beaches is already quite general. And the emphasis is on often quite privileged beaches or beaches near... Um, tourist destinations and not focusing on other areas which might actually need more uh, focused concentrations. We then talked about the items, saying that generally they talk about macro size and general waste. There's some initiatives, like we heard about the cigarette butts, but generally it's more macro and general. Um, and then we talked about the locations, where it is, um, and um, how it's all managed. And so the main points are often southeast and south of uh, Brazil. We were also very conscious, especially with the second group that came in, is who's in the room. We're probably more aware of these initiatives. We probably don't know as much of what's happening up in the north and northeast, which then goes on to our point about management. 
Uh, a lot of these are very local, very, down, very much down to the individual. So if there's one really strong uh, campaigning individual, if they then leave, you might lose momentum or the flow and so on. Um, and it's often very independent. You don't tend to work across uh, organizations, regions and so on. And so in terms of the green text, where we'd like to go in the future, um, both groups, actually, the conclusion is we shouldn't really be focusing on removal of litter. We need to stop it at source. But there's this uh, cycle in that we need to know what is a litter to focus on. So we need to collect data and understand what is the composition, where is it coming from, um, maybe what groups or um, what areas need to be focused on. And this needs to be done through removing the litter and collecting the data. Um, and then we would be able to concentrate our efforts in terms of the source. Uh, and we talked about lots of other things of being more systematic in our collection and focusing on other areas and more entry points further up rivers and so on. I think that's a recap of the two groups and a quick, fast run through. Um, over to data. <laughs> well, I'll try to be as efficient as Kaylee in explaining my <laughs> group. My group was data driven. So the main issues that were uh, discussed were about uh, protocols. The initiatives use protocols, but they use different protocols, and it's difficult to standardize uh, and uh, reach conclusions across different initiatives because of that. So it, this is an issue and a problem that should be fought. So protocols. Regarding protocols, uh, there is a, a is an issue concerning training of the volunteers. So the initiatives are uh, counting on volunteers, but not always providing proper training. So this uh, kind of produces a problem with data quality and the validation of this data and scientific use of this data. So there is a need for us to think about uh, the cho choosing as a protocol, uh, uh, even if it, the protocol needs to be adapted to some contexts, we need to uh, think on protocols that allow us to compare initiatives across the country or internationally. So uh, the protocols mainly uh, related to the collection of quantitative data, how much? and which kind of uh, litter uh, there are on the beaches. Uh, <coughs> some of them were related to the correlation between these kinds of litter and the quality of the beaches. So that's something that came out of the discussion, this pattern. Uh, although the initiatives uh, had as an objective the environmental aware aware awareness, <laughs> environmental education, since it of people, um, protocols were not focused on that. Uh, so the data produced are basically uh, uh, with the initiatives and people do, do not have access to raw data. Mainly the, the data which is publicized is uh, synthesized data, reports, and this in, is an issue that should also be treated. We need a database, a public database, uh, so that people can use data for different purposes. So there, the question of transparency, who collected data, uh, and uh, the license use of the license of using this data should be also things that we should think about. And who would uh, be the one to um, be responsible for this database? So we talked something about the government uh, or big uh, <laughs> companies being uh, responsible for providing resources, human resources and financial resources for these databases. Uh, so we talked about the 
Uh, I think that's mainly mainly this. But uh, a problem is, uh, that was also talked about it was the use of this data to embase public policies. How can we think about protocols that produce data that can now actually be used to help in public policies? That's it. So, I'll try to be not so briefly, because it's a thing that I have. Okay. So, in my group, uh, we are talking about the engagement of the volunteers. But we didn't have so organized discussions, I guess. It's mo it was more like philosophical, maybe. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, but we started to talk about... Uh, how the projects that, that we saw today are engaging people uh, to participate in their project. So all those in black are things that uh, the projects are doing now. But mostly uh, we have uh, uh, not a, a specific, please uh, correct me if I say something wrong, uh, but mostly we, they are focusing on general public. We have some of them, they are focusing uh, in a specific target group, uh, for example, Monitoramento Mirim Costeiro, which is targeted in a uh, specific um, age uh, of people. So there is many, many um, uh, ways that they are trying to engage people. Um, one of them is using social media, but one thing, uh, there's many things here that some or most of the projects are using now, but they think they should improve or they should use more or they should, yeah, they should use more. As social media, for example. Uh, use um, things to attract attention. Um, someone uh, mentioned like that image of the turtle with a straw in the nose. People uh, used to uh, be shocked and it caused the attraction of those people to the problem. And maybe they would be interested in participating in the, in the projects. Using famous people to uh, promote the, the, the initiative. Uh, people in the community to give examples for others to engage in, in the initiatives. Uh, snowball initiation, so I start to, to, do, uh, to participate in a, in a project and I tell Natalia about how awesome is it and so on. So this is uh, one of the strategies that uh, they are using. And here, examples, and communicating, raising awareness, uh, hands-on activities as another way to engage people, but trying to summarize the, in the final group that visit me, we start to, uh, first, the first group, we are, uh, start to discuss about the volunteers who are participating directly with the project, with the project leaders, with the coordinators of the initiatives. The second group uh, relied on how we engage people that are in a second level, for example, companies, government, and so on. So we finished, I think I can finish like this, so, we finished with a question. How we transform volunteers into activists? So, how we engage those people who are there, sitting in their chairs, to do something? Or how we transform the volunteers who are participating directly with us uh, into activists to make the projects uh, go on in the long term? So, Basically, is that what we discussed in the group? So that, okay. So, 
Right, and I think, oh. British time. British time again, yeah. <laughs> So that is the end of day one, I think. I don't know if anyone else has closing words. Um, we do have now for, I think, two hours before the bus comes to take people back to the hotel, if you've got that. Um, so in that time, please do mingle, speak to one another, eat food, drink drinks, and, and just be merry. <laughs> Thank you very much, and we'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. It starts. So nice early morning, getting you ready for Saturday. <laughs> Thank you very much.